for my client who has been looking for this watch for quite some time now. It's been a harder piece to source and we finally found one for him. So he's super anxious. He almost thought we probably wouldn't be able to find this because it's been a minute, um, but we found one. So I'm excited to see his reaction when he opens it and see what he thinks about it. Let's go check it out. Okay, moment of truth. We can open it right here. So here it is, Alan, I'm so excited for you. So basically, Alan purchased a 4600V Vacheron with the blue dial, stainless steel, has that 34 millimeter dial, which is so, so cool. I've actually never seen a watch that is 34 and a half millimeters. So this is the holy grail of watches. Vacheron is just one of those brands that you wanna have in your watch collection. And you've been looking for the perfect one. And this is definitely the perfect one. This one in particular is only two weeks old. So it's literally brand new and it comes with two straps. It has that calf leather strap and then it has the rubber strap as well. Sick. The box is so cool. Come on over this way so you can kind of get a feel for what the watch looks like if you want to pull it out, Alan, and just kind of flash to the camera. It's so, so cool, so clean, so unique. You'll probably be the only one out there wearing it in the DFW area, who knows? I haven't seen one of these in person, so it's pretty cool to see it. It's just such a sharp looking watch. That one actually does have the new easy release bracelet. So when you open it, it also has a double deployant clasp here. So double deployant gives you that nice space, which is super cool. Has that open case back, which is amazing. And it has this easy remove system here. So you just hit the buttons, it removes the bracelet, and then you can easily clip on the new bracelet, which is just insane. Cause it just takes the hassle away from having to use any tools or anything like that. So it has the two bracelets, as I mentioned, this is the leather one and the rubber one and they just clip right in. So that's super cool. It's amazing. I feel like Vacheron definitely has, and this is a personal opinion here, but I do think Vacheron has one of the best blue dials. This thing looks crazy, sort of like, out of all the other blue dials that I've seen. Yeah, it's definitely the best blue. One of the bracelets, uh, I think it's the leather one, also has a double deployment on there as well. So that's pretty cool. It'll give you that extra space. What do you think? No. It really took so long to source this watch for him. And like, thank you for your patience. Like you knew exactly what you wanted. And I respect that when we have a client that knows exactly what they want and they're like, no, I'm gonna wait until you can find one. I appreciate that you had enough trust in us to wait. I knew you were gonna to get it, <laughs> yes, I'm so glad we found it. The thing about this watch is that typically this is a relationship type watch and it's only been around for a year. Mm. So the chances of us being able to source one, it comes and goes so quickly because typically when a client gets this, they keep it. We got really lucky and we were able to find one and it's just a great one, like two weeks old, you can't. It even has stickers still, so like you could still see the stickers are on the cloud. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the card and I was like, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's so worth waiting for. Yeah, and now you have a Vacheron in your collection. Yeah. Finally! Yeah. That's amazing. And Alan is a, he keeps coming back to us. So like, we just love his Y'all business. <laughs> we appreciate you for believing in Woven and the vision and just for being consistently, you know, one of our customers. Thank you so much. Of course, thank you, Alan. All right, and we're all done. And you love it. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so glad. The last two times I've worked with you, it's been good vibes. It's been good vibes. So we gave we'll, you a hard time the last time, so. <laughs> no, you were just testing me, but I think I passed the test, so we're good. And I'd love to help your brother find that Santos later on. We can find him a really good deal on that. So you have a really sick collection right now. Like, yeah, it's super awesome. you have some stuff that like, I don't think I've ever seen people have. Like, yeah, I just pretty much buy what I like rather than any like And like the hype, the hype yeah. yeah. I don't think you have many like, <laughs> Oh, Maybe you're gonna run into a lot of people who have that, yeah. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Thanks again. I'll get the door for you. If you get a really sick picture of it, send it to me. I would love to see it. Take care, Thank Alan. You. Bye. Bye. <sighs> yes. Good. I love when we could like find someone their dream watch. It's like the best feeling. And he's been so patient with Wolven. Just like some watches just are harder to find. And this one is one of those watches that like we've been looking and looking and as soon as we get one, the deposit doesn't come fast enough because it goes. So with him, we were able to get the deposit and make it move and he's so happy. So like, I'm so happy. So if you need a watch, we can find it. Sometimes it just takes a little bit more time. We're still interested in the Daytona and if so, what dial? Okay, dial. I think for the two tone. 
Okay. Well, okay, then let me ask you this, because I like there's a broad sweep of options that I could go with. Talk to me a little bit about your, your taste so I can figure out which one would be good. Are you looking for just the best price out of the dials that are available? Do you like the gold matching the champagne dial? Do you like contrast, like with the black or the white? Yeah, either way, I think it's just, you know, which out of there, because I know those pretty much, the, I know the MSRP is the same, right? It's just a matter of um, availability. And then best price for the, you know, what's available. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. To, to Good to know. Like yeah. So best price available, any color dial. Okay. Uh, well, I could get you like a sample of that 2023 or four and uh, maybe send you one of those options here. Get some photos of the other watch if I can from my source. Send those to you yeah. as well. And then just know like if, when you're ready to pull the trigger, because I know we, uh, we should probably do that pretty quick because his birthday's coming up. Sounds good. All right, I'll be in touch, Tony, appreciate you. Just gave Tony a call, he wants to watch for his son turning 21 on June 12th, so a happy birthday. And we'll be getting probably the 126000 blue dial 36 millimeter OP for him. And then Tony himself is interested in either the two-tone yellow gold Daytona with any color dial or a yellow gold day date, champagne. So I'll send him some options and we'll go from there. Hello. Hey Eric, this is uh, Josh Navarro with Wolven. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Hey, I'm looking at your uh, Wimbledon. It looks perfect and uh, it's ready to go. Okay, all right. So I'll come by and get it then. Sounds good. All right, man, we'll have it wrapped up and ready to go for you. All right, cool. All right, sounds good. We'll see you soon. So I have a client of mine who just picked up this gorgeous uh, Wimbledon in stainless steel with the Jubilee bracelet. Just a clean watch. I'm actually surprised he bought this because uh, everything he's bought thus far from us has been like crazy. Actually, the very first watch he bought was a platinum baguette fluted bezel president right when it first came out. And I was like, I talked to him and I was like, hey, these are super hot right now. Prices are a little inflated. Are you sure this is the one you want right now? And he said, yep. And so we sold it to him. And then the next watch he bought was a uh, world timer Vacheron and he's bought some other pretty big pieces and so I was surprised when he asked for just a little Wimbledon because it's kind of a uh, normally it's the other way around normally we get these first and then you kind of climb the ladder but for him it was the other way around but I think he just wants something a daily that's why I asked him if it was for him because sometimes clients who ask for those types of watches all the time they'll buy something like this as a gift so you know maybe we'll gift wrap it for somebody or something like that but you know, it's, and it's not all the time. I just, I guess, I guess normally just we kind of expect some patterns, but honestly, it's a beautiful watch. I can't blame him for wanting this piece. All right, everybody. So there was a lot of heat in the comments section in the last episode for this particular scene. And I want to kind of explain what was going on behind it to give a little bit more context. But before I do, check out this scene. With Pepsis, you pretty much can't get a Pepsi with an AD right now, unless maybe you've spent like a hundred grand with them. But what, do you want to spend a hundred grand to get a $12,000 watch? I wouldn't. And they'll make you wait two years because they got people in line. But the only way you're going to get 12 and a half is if you actually buy an MSRP. Because I'm here to work for you. I'm not here to fight you. I'm here to go to bat for you, which I've already done, and make a deal. One of my favorite parts of this job. I just dropped you down to 58500 So I just dropped you down almost $3,000. So that, you know, if we're talking thousands, I'm working on your behalf, man. I just went to bat for you. I understand, I understand, but I've flex, in the real world, I've flexed much further than you flex because 50 is not an offer in the real world. I want to be honest with that. I don't mean any disrespect, but all I'm saying is this. I, like, I wouldn't, if I didn't want to get these watches to you and make this happen, I wouldn't have done it. All right, I understand. I'll, I'll talk to him, man, but I'm telling you, they're, I'm telling you, we're, what we're doing right now is literally, I had literally Andrew right now just told me don't do it, and I did it. He told me don't go to 58 and a half, and I went to 58 and a half. Before you start. Okay, we're back. So basically what we're looking at here, this was an interaction between me 
and a particular buyer. Uh, he had been a client in the past. It was my first time working with him. We had had many discussions up until this point together, and I had really been working on his behalf in regards to getting two watches, the Yachtmaster 2 yellow gold with Mercedes hands, and then he was looking at a Pepsi. I found him a great option on Oyster, actually a really good price. So I started both of those at really great prices, and we were sitting just over 60 grand. And he comes with an initial offer or negotiation from him at 50. And this was the point where I began to realize, wait a minute, typically most of my clients are gonna come with a reasonable market value based offer if they're going to negotiate because they're like, hey man, I don't think I can quite do that. I know you have good prices, but like, can we do a little bit less? But he came in 10 grand under, and that's when I began to realize, okay, he may be coming to negotiate, but it may not be based off of an understanding of the market. So maybe I can help bring some explanations. So there were a, a few other calls right around this time where I was talking to him actually about the market too. Earlier in this exact call, he said a Pepsi would be worth it to him, because I had asked, for $12,000. And that's when I realized he's looking at MSRP, AD pricing. He's not seeing that $10,000 markup of a Pepsi right now on the secondary market and what they're actually going for. So that's when I told him, I said, you know, if you would want to buy this watch from an AD, you can, but you'll probably spend a lot more money on other watches in the meantime and get waitlisted maybe for like two years or so, because most of my clients, I mean, they're working to get like a Pepsi or a Panda or some of these really big ones, but it takes them so long to actually get there. So all of that being said, that's when I was talking with him and getting the discussion going and saying, let me help to explain some of the market and what this is actually worth. If I were in your shoes, I would not spend like a hundred grand with an AD just to try to get a Pepsi because working to get a Pepsi like that and getting a bunch of pieces that go under on equity would be really rough. So that's where I was starting to explain. And when he came back, he goes, well, 55 grand. And I was like, my man, like, I came from 62 or so all the way down to 58, and I've moved uh, about three and a half thousand dollars by the end of it is where I had moved towards him. And he goes, well, I've moved $5,000 already. And that's when I said, well, it's not $5,000 from an initial reasonable market value offer. That's where I think we kind of started seeing the difference between him and me. And in the long run, Andrew told me not to move. He was like, I wouldn't do it, bro. I wouldn't go further under 59,000 total. And I went to 58 and a half just as a good gesture for this guy. And I was like, man, I, I'm going to bat for you and I hope you can take this deal. And he was so close, but by the end of it, he ended up not pulling the trigger and he asked me, find a unicorn. And I told him, well, I have. So that being said, in the future, for uh, any of y'all who are working with us, just know we go to bat for you really, really hard. We do want you to understand the market. We explain it the best we possibly can so you can kind of see where things are at. Even for wholesale, we'll be transparent and candid. But basically, I told him, this is the unicorn and I hope you don't lose it. So when we can find you guys one of those really crazy deals, I just pray you guys take it because there have been a couple recently where I was like, man, these are good deals. Don't miss them. All right, so that's the big picture. That's kind of what we're looking at for the behind the scenes, the context. We wanted to give you guys a little bit more clarity and insight into it because we can't always do that with every single scene of all of our episodes. But that gives some clarity that uh, it wasn't just about being pushy and trying to make a sale. In this case, he really wanted to make the sale and I was standing my ground on the value of these watches because I'm confident in what we offer and in the good prices I was already offering and just seeing if we could meet in the middle. So that's everything and hopefully that context kind of helps in this particular scenario and thank you to everybody for all your support and for bringing us great business. All right guys, let's get John his half brick. You ready? Some of y'all remember this watch from John when he first came in looking for a 44 millimeter AP and in fact the offshore that he was looking for at the time was kind of a broad description. And this is the one that caught his eye because he was looking to just get a offshore that he could enjoy, wear out for a little while, neutral colors, a little bit of blues and grays, that type of thing. And now he's trading it back in because he's buying the half brick today. So I'm gonna go take that out to him. I feel like it's not gonna fit in this, bro. So we're finishing wrapping this up for John. In this box is the 26470OR, the rose gold half brick on black rubber and uh, I think he's gonna absolutely love it. I got it touched up, it looks freaking pristine. So congrats, John. Let's go. All right, John, let's get it open over here at my desk. If you wanna open it here, you can. If you wanna no. wear it out, you're fine. 
No, I'm good. I'm gonna. Cool. Uh, I can see you went matching intentionally. Today, yeah, so. like uh, actually, you know what? So you got you got to wear it. I was gonna say I'm you got to tell it. me when you first yeah, yeah, uh, debut wear it. it because um, I'm going to the mall and I can stick this one in my pocket. Yeah, I'll leave it in my car. Yeah. Not. Yeah, in the heat. Yeah. Yeah, save that one. Bring it with you, but you got to wear yeah. this one. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Looks good. Yeah, I can't wait to get the uh, strap in. Yeah. It's, oh yeah, it, send me a photo it, when you get your um, custom strap. Yeah. Leather with rose gold color. Um, what do you call it? It's Stitching. An actual, yeah. Yes. It yeah. Bad, send dude. me a photo it's like, when you get like that. Seven hundred bucks. So. Yeah, that sounds about right. Bad. Yeah, we got it all cleaned up. Oh, it looks so good. You got to show this to the camera. Come in here. This looks so freaking good. It's beautiful, John. Awesome. I All love right, it. man. I love it. Yep. Until we see you again. Absolutely. I want to be bringing my buddy in. He's, we just got so busy this week uh -huh. that I'm hoping next week I can bring Jay in to come look around. Got it. Yeah, bring him in. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Pleasure. Appreciate Let me get the door for you. Yep. Enjoy the event tonight. Send me I a will. photo when you get that strap. I will. All right. Guys, take care. We'll see you soon. Thank you. You uh -huh. too, John. That is one of the prettiest watches I've sold, I feel like. That one is sick. All right, guys. That's John for you. He gets in, gets out. He's got a lot going on and he's always a busy guy, but we're gonna keep doing some good business in the future and he's probably got a lot of woven bags at home. All right guys, if you've been following the channel, you may have seen my previous segment of watches under $10,000 and today I wanted to bring you guys another segment within $10,000, but this time I wanted to stick within one brand and that being Rolex. There's a lot of people in the market that are looking for a Rolex within that $10,000 range. So I kind of want to give you guys some options to show you what's out there what you can expect and uh, what the pricing looks like on some of these and so I have five options lined up that I think are some pretty solid options they're also ones that we currently have in stock so if by the end of this if you do like one of these or you're very interested feel free to go on our website or hit one of us up and we are more than happy to give you all the information you need on these and by the end of this video if you would like more information about any of these pieces please reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to help you guys out now getting into this I'm gonna start off with the watch furthest to my left and this is a watch that still looks very much like its original granddad that came out back in 1953 and that is the Explorer 1 in the 36 millimeter. This watch right here has been around since 1953 when the first Explorer 1 was launched and to be honest this watch has stayed true to its original self. With this watch here you do get slight upgrades throughout the years that Rolex has made to their watches. For instance you do get the flip lock with this one ensuring that you have that extra security while you're wearing the watch. Um, and you also have the luminescent dial, which they did have back in the day, but now you get that white gold around holding with the luminescence within, and it's not something painted on the dial. It looks a little bit more elegant, and it just makes the dial pop out a little bit more. Now, this is a watch that would look very good with almost any outfit you can wear. This is a watch that I would consider a little less sporty version of the Submariner. This one, to me, I feel like you can just dress up a little bit more with the slimness of the case and the high polish around the bezel. It just makes this watch look a little bit more dressy. You can wear this more with a suit versus a Submariner. May not look as good with a suit since it is a sport watch. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to clash a sports watch with a suit or with your more formal attire, then this I think this would be a great option for somebody like that. Not to mention this watch you can get for under $10,000. Brand new, you can get this watch for about $9,500. We do have a couple of options, brand new and pre-owned here at Wolven. This one going for about $8,000 and you can even get cheaper depending on the year and condition you want to go. So this is definitely a good pickup for somebody who's not looking to stretch the budget all the way and kind of wants that same Submariner feel without paying the price for it or without getting that aluminum bezel Submariner. That's a really good option. Now moving on to the next one. This one is a little bit special in my opinion and it's because of the particular dial that it has. Now this right here is an Oyster Perpetual with the white dial. And if you don't know why the white dial is special, it's because the Oyster Perpetual in this reference number, which is the 11 reference, so that would be the 114300 or the 116000, which is what this one is, indicating that it's 36 millimeters. The white dial in this era is nowadays considered a unicorn because whenever people were buying the Oyster Perpetuals, they did have like the more fun colors. They had the gray with the Tiffany blue and then the purple with the lighter magenta color. Whenever these watches were in production, those are the ones that were selling more. And then watches like this with the plain white dial are kind of the ones that just sat for a while. And if you're not somebody who's new to Rolex collecting, then you would know that watches that sit at Rolex during the production time 
tend to be more popular later on down the road because that tells you that there's just less of them out there or they were undesirable at a time and then later people look back on it and say, I really miss that watch. And so this is kind of one of those that hits that spot. The white dial actually does drive a premium because there's just not many out there. They're a little bit harder to come by versus the grays and the purples and these different colors that are special colors, but this is just one that's just not readily available all the time. So if you want something a little unique in your collection, this is definitely something to go with. This one we still have available for $7,500. And then the, if you wanna go with the 39 millimeter version, then that's gonna put you a little bit closer to about that $9,000 mark. But these you can still get in a complete set for those prices. And honestly, they're pretty nice watches. If you want something that just a clean everyday look, this is definitely a good option for you. Now moving on, I'm gonna go into a Rolex sport model watch for under 10,000 and your first thought might run to Submariner, but I'm not gonna do Submariner just because that's a very obvious option that's out there. I wanna point out another one that actually is a little bit more popular at times than the Submariner, just for the price point that it's in. So I'm gonna show you this one right here is the Rolex Explorer Polar Dial. And honestly, this watch is a very clean watch. This was actually one of my favorite watches whenever I got into the watch world. And it still tends to be a very popular one that still gets people intrigued into that watch market. I remember when I was first looking at Rolex, one of the first models I was looking at was the Explorer 1 and the Explorer 2. And this one was the successor of the Explorer 1. And to get it under that 10K price and significantly less, I just think is such a bargain for what it is. This is another watch that can be very versatile and you can wear it with pretty much anything but then you do still get that orange GMT hand in there if you did want a pop of color or something that's just a little bit different something that the Submariner doesn't have which is worth pointing out then this is definitely the route to go I think it's still a very understated and very versatile watch it does just give you a little bit more to look at within the watch versus a Submariner in my personal opinion also for the price point you can get these without box and papers you can get them as low as about seven thousand dollars with box and papers you can pay up to about eight to eighty five hundred dollars and so it's just such an unbeatable price for what this is you do get a little bit different side of versatility that the Submariner gives you so you could even have the Submariner and this one as well in your collection at the same time and for the value that you get out of this watch and the fact that you can just wear this daily and not have to worry about it too much it makes this watch pretty unbeatable next I'm going to get into this one right here and this is another one where if you're looking for something that's still versatile, something that's modern, but something that's also a little bit fun. It's not the same thing that everybody else has, like a Submariner or something, and you want to be under that 10K mark. This is kind of the sweet spot. This is the Rolex Air King, and it is actually the new one with the crown guards, which I do actually really like that upgrade. Uh, if you're not familiar with that upgrade, this watch came out in 2022, and they updated the watch by adding crown guards to it which I think just helps balance out the watch a little bit more. They also added a zero in front of the five to kind of even out the look on the dial. Those small upgrades made a big difference on this watch. If you do get to see these in person side by side, you'll probably agree with me that this one just looks a little bit more well-balanced and evened out, and it looks a little bit even more modern, dare I say. This is a really another solid option, and you're still under that $10,000 mark. Brand new, you'll probably pay up to about $10,000. This is one that we have that is very, very mint condition. And we have this one for closer to that $9,000 mark. So if you're wanting something that's modern, versatile, but then also a little bit different and not something that everybody else has, this is a really good option for you. And now that's gonna bring me into my last option. And that is going to be a very coveted model and that is the Rolex Datejust. Before I get into this one, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. Yes, this one has a smooth bezel and an oyster bracelet. This watch you can get configured in so many different ways. Specifically, this configuration to me is just such a very classy configuration. Having that smooth bezel with oyster, if you look back on the other two options I showed you that had black dials, right here, the Explorer 1, it did have an all brushed look. And then similarly right here, with the Air King, you do get the all brushed look on the links as well. On the date just however, if you do get, decide to go with that black dial, you can get this watch in a black dial and you're gonna get that high polish all throughout the bracelet. And that's a big game changer for this watch. Now, I know the Jubilee tends to be a little bit more popular when it comes to date just. However, this configuration combined 
just makes the watch look a lot more classy and versatile in my opinion. If you want something that's still dressy, but you can still wear very casually, in my opinion, this watch is going to be the most dressy one out of the lineup that I have here. So if you're somebody that likes to dress up a little bit more, but you're still looking to be under that $10,000 mark, this is a very solid option for you. And if you're not a big fan of the black dial, although it's just black, so I don't know who wouldn't be, they do have some other dial options for you that are still within that $10,000 range. They have the black one right here. They also make a white, a lighter silver color, and then a rhodium dial. So that's another benefit that you get with going with a Datejust is you do get the option to change the dial color versus on the Oyster Perpetual, you do get more funky colors. This one you can get in a silver or a rhodium. So that's just another added perk at looking at this watch. You are gonna pay closer to that $10,000 mark. If you're wanting something brand new, you'll probably end up paying exactly 10,000. But if you're okay with getting something slightly pre-owned or mint condition, then you can still get under that $10,000 mark. And if you even want to go older, you can even get closer down to the $8,000 mark. So this is just a very solid option for somebody who's wanting something that's versatile. This is a solid option for that person. This one I hear being brand new condition. We do have this one listed for exactly $10,000. So again, if you guys are interested in this watch or any of the other watches I talked about, feel free to reach out to one of us and we'll be more than happy to help you guys out. So the tough thing is th this guy, this, this is Marco and Marco's client is asking for over retail for me to pay. But these other three, he's asking far over retail. And so I'm just trying to like gently let him know you know, maybe reconsider his numbers or shop me around and just see what he can do. I'm guessing he still wants around 11 or 12 for it. This Be one? I'm guessing, yeah, I'm about to ask. Retail's like, after tax, you're like about 88. Yeah, so I'm guessing he's gonna ask a little more because he's been asking more than retail on the others, but hopefully he's flexible on this one. Yeah, wholesale's about like 99,000 so to 9250 on it. So you would pay, I mean, I what? I could pay 75. I would like to be at 75. Yeah. Uh, I would yeah, probably go up to eight, but I'd rather like try 77, 78 before you go up to eight. Eight feels like we wouldn't be able to offload it. Yeah, kind of. Okay, Marco, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, so I worked on this a little bit for you on the additional watch, the fifth watch. I'm hoping he's not asking over retail on this one, because again, I. Uh, I can't beat that if he's, you know, asking over retail. I can consign, but do you know how much he wants for it? He wants 11. That's over retail. Okay. So what's your, what's your offer? My offer what would be... What are you saying? I'd, I'd be seven and a half is where I would want to be on that. Yeah, uh, look, uh, I don't know. He's strong with these prices. I've had other offers and he's just saying no, as in... <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I think that's okay. You know, uh, maybe just keep working with him for a little bit longer. And if he's never gonna budge on these prices, you may just have to say, all right, man, well, I can't help you with this set of watches because you're connecting him with a lot of dealers who were like me and like others who work the market a lot. And basically the only watch that was reasonable is the one that he was able to sell. The other ones so far, it sounds like the offers are coming through and, and he's standing strong where he's at. But if it's over retail, unless he's willing to consign, and consign it like a, a competitive retail, he's probably just gonna realize, okay, uh, you know, I shopped them around, all these prices, they're realistic for the market, and I'll, he, maybe he'll reassess and come back to you, and then we can do business then. So I had a, cl a good client, Charlie, he traded in three pieces for two pieces, and then still had to pay a quite a big delta, but he traded in as an Eisenkaisel, uh, Rolex Day Date in rose gold with uh, the baguette markers, he traded in a naked uh, John Mayer blue dial, white gold, Daytona, and then he also traded, what was the last one? Oh, he had bought a blue and black ceramic 26420 CE. It's a 44 millimeter offshore. The case is black ceramic, the bezel's blue. It's got a blue strap with a ombre blue to black dial. Very cool watch, uh, cool for any of you Cowboys fans. And so he traded that plus $210,000 for a limited of 222 pieces, 2021, brand new condition, Japan edition, chrono AP in white gold with a vibrant blue dial, probably one of the best blue dials I've ever seen. And then he also bought a 5991R in rose gold. It was also a 2023 brand new condition, complete set. And so he bought both of those pieces. It was the blue dial sale. He bought a beautiful white gold piece and then complimented it with a beautiful rose gold piece. So 
Very, very cool combo, very cool two watch collection. And so uh, he came in this morning and we had just gotten the 5990. It was just such a smooth deal. Luckily this dealer that I sourced this from is a good guy. And so uh, he described the watch as like new condition. It came in as like new condition. I probably could have passed it and said it was new, but we don't do that. So we knew that it had been worn before by the original owner, but it was in that immaculate of condition. So he came this morning, picked up his Japan edition, and he also picked up his paddock, and so he is uh, very excited about it. The Farley Jubilee bracelet with a smooth bezel. But... Got you, okay. Yeah, let me see if I can find something for you in this exact option and then get you some pricings on that and see what we can do. Do you have a ballpark of where you want to be and like a budget range for it? Well, let's just say uh, normal cost. Okay, I understand. Let me see if I can get you a good price then. And uh, are you open to pre-owned? Uh, yeah, well, it's not more than three or four years old, which I know that main green's what, five, six years old. Yeah, I'll try to get you maybe a 2020 and newer, if possible, and then uh, I'll make sure that you've got box and papers with it. I'm assuming you want a full, full set instead of naked, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, well, let me work on getting you some options because I don't have one of those in stock at the moment, but I do have some others. You can check out what I do have in stock online at wolven.com and then I'll text you back some options. I just got a call from Will. It's his first time calling Wolven. He's a brand new interested buyer and he's looking for a mint green date just smooth bezel actually on Jubilee. He's looking for the 41 about 2020 to 2024. He's open to pre-owned. So I'm kind of looking through some of the watches that we have and just seeing if there are some alternatives that he might be interested in with some great configurations that I've got in store since I don't have that exact one right now. But I'm also working on some options to be able to get him exactly what he wants and see what he thinks of the price. So some of these that I'm pulling out, they might be higher budget ranges, but I don't know exactly where he wants to be because he left that kind of broad and open. So I'll just give him some options and see what he likes best.